Hi. My name is Peter Bacon and I play Lieutenant Commander Portis. My name is Mark Jackson and I play Isaac. Chad L. Coleman and I play Clyde. Well, I just have to say I do miss Therese very much. Oh. <laughs> Gone but not forgotten. No, that's for sure. <laughs> Are you shitting me? <laughs> like, no, I mean, I love science fiction and uh, it's normal. Like, it's like people going to work. It's like going to work on a spaceship and happen to be an alien. I mean, it's so. But, the, you know, the mixture of, of, of comedy uh, uh, and, and drama, like, the situation doesn't always end well. Uh, and it's perilous, there are things that happen that uh, and, like, things don't wrap up to be like this neat Hollywood ending. But, you know, like, the, I think my favorite, my, my, my most honest reaction to the script was like the, the balance between the, the, the drama like, and, and, and the humor. You know? So that's, that's, and that, that's, that's what I found it. Nice to hear another Brit out yes. here. <laughs> it's been a while since I've heard of um, For me, I mean, I read a lot of sci fi um, as well as Peter. And uh, for me, when I read the scripts for the first time, what I loved was the originality of it. Um, it's stuff that I hadn't seen in movies. You know, I, I have gone to see a lot of sci fi movies in the last 10 years and been really disappointed time and time again because it, it, they're not original. Whereas these scripts really are, um, and that, that, that's very reassuring. And I think the fans, the audience, will really buy into that because it's refreshing. And every week you can tune in for a new, inventive story, a new adventure, um, and be taken somewhere quite, quite extraordinary. <laughs> It was hilarious. <laughs> you read it and you laugh. And I, you know, when you read it and you laugh out loud, you know, you get excited. You get excited. Wow. I just had that experience and I want somebody else to have that experience. And, you know, it's something with Yeah, I was going to ask, what's yeah. it like working with Mr. Oh, McFarland? Easy. Easy, yeah. man. The guy is incredibly accessible, very passionate, very clear about what he's, what he's looking for. Mm -hmm. You know, he directs you. It gives you another sense of uh, confidence because he's so clear about what he wants, and he's also not sure on praise. He loves it. He lets you know he loves it. So yeah. it's um, and you know, push the envelope. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, yeah like, we're gonna show you some stuff like that you haven't seen yeah, before. Like your character, I saw the first episode and I, I love that. Oh. Your your character sings sex. Hold on. Yes. What did you think about it? Hold on. on. <laughs> well, I read the you know the pilot. I'm like, oh, this is interesting. Oh, he only he only pees once a year. Okay, that's good. that's just the tip of the tippity oh, tip tip of the iceberg. <laughs> yeah. What yeah. happens to this? Exactly. And and that's what's really cool. Um, and, and I marvel. Like this came from like basically one person's mind who has been passionate about science fiction. Uh, in the same way that I've been passionate, we're about the same age, and so like our, our references for shows, and like we're always playing this game of like quoting a movie, you know. So there's like I never feel I never have felt more like uh, where the nerds have come into our own, you know what I mean? Like it's like we are here and we're taking it over. Um, so how many like, Star Trek quotes are there? Like yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, they're not necessarily quotes. This is like what you were saying today. This is like an homage or an old to Star Trek. It's not a spoof. No. I like I, we get that a lot. And like a spoof is just like, okay, we're gonna sort of make fun of this and like we're gonna be cheeky. I mean, but it's like we're doing satire, like, um, and sort of picking up maybe where the Star Trek franchise left off or just like an offering of the future, you know, where it's not like apocalyptic. We figured some stuff out. We're not necessarily using oil anymore. Right. Um, you know, homophobia and like all these things are out of the, because we're dealing with aliens and people. And the great thing is, is that it normalizes, you know, and the relationships are deep. I mean, they're like, we, you know, we have, they're, they're multi-layered and they're just like, they're no different. If you were to close your eyes and watch and listen to this show, you wouldn't necessarily know that it was full of aliens because it's <laughs> the same, you know, um, issues that we all tackle in present day, and like politically, and like, so all that stuff is there. So I mean, it's, I think, but at the same time, yeah. but at the same time, 
You have yeah. not seen it. Some Aaron. crazy shit goes down. Yeah. Yeah. They are you pretty. have not seen it. But we, and the, great, the great thing about the show is we're going back to yes. sort of those fantastic sci-fi 80s movies where you have these real alien creatures. I mean, from the creature workshop kind of thing. Yeah. And we have a fantastic um, makeup and Howard Berger. designer, Oscar winner. Yeah, Oscar winner. Howard Berger working on the show. And he's creating these monsters for us. Yeah. I say monsters. That's what I mean. No, it's not much. I mean, but it's not much. I am an alien in the show. Yeah. I shouldn't say that. But it's but like other aliens. We're not CGI. You know what I mean? Like, it's like my prosthetics. It takes an hour and a half to four hours you know, to get into. And I'm going to live in that. And it's, and it's so easy once you're in it because you can't help but be that. I mean, right. And they're so detail oriented. They're, they're true, true, amazing artists. Um, and they have to do a lot of applications. So it's not just like one or two aliens. Like sometimes we have like 50, 60 like backgrounds and they're different kinds of aliens and like they're working through like, uh, you know, with budgetary constraints you like tend to have like humanoid type aliens. Right. But they're trying to break through that as well, you know. So I think that, um, you know, back to what you said, like the spoof is like, it kind of sells it short because of the word. Not only is it a, like a love letter in a sense to like Star Trek and to Space 1999 and to like all these, you know what I mean? Like uh, it, 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 the baton is in our hands to, to, and it's an hour long. You know, I mean, you could just have joke, 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 joke. If it was a half an hour, but like with an hour, that doesn't fly. You gotta have some real grounded relationships and you know, and, and it's um, episodic. So it's you know, you could watch episode two and then watch episode twelve, and you know what I mean. It's not in that sort of same. In the age of you binge know, watching, binge watching uh, <laughs> series, that's quite rare, as yeah. Seth pointed out. You know.